Welcome to Afghan News. NATO Secretary General Anders Fagras Musen said Monday he was confident the transition from NATO to local control of security in Afghanistan will be completed by 2014 as planned. Talking to members of NATO's parliamentary assembly gathered in Bucharest, Romania, Rasmussen said that he is quite optimistic about fulfilling the timetable to transfer lead responsibility to the Afghans, a process that started in July this year and that will be completed by 2014. As some lawmakers said, they doubted the Afghan forces' ability to take over from the alliance. Rasmussen said NATO had already handed over the lead on security in seven provinces, accounting for 25 percent of the population. Rasmussen added that he would expect President Hamid Karzai to announce the next tranche of transition later this month, which will be just as substantial with between 40 and 50 percent of the Afghan population living under the responsibility of local forces. He admitted nevertheless that training the Afghan police was quite a challenge, adding that the Afghan security forces had become more and more capable quantitatively as well as qualitatively. A United Nations report has found compelling evidence that Afghan intelligence officials at five detention centers systematically tortured detainees for the purpose of obtaining confessions and information. In the report published on Monday, the UN Assistance Mission in Afghanistan said torture was practiced systematically in some Afghan intelligence detention centers, and children were among those who had suffered. The report si singled out National Directorate Security Facilities in the provinces of Herat, Kandahar, Khos, and Lahman, as well as the headquarters of the ND NDA's counter-terrorism department in Kabul, the capital. The findings were based on interviews conducted from October 2010 to August 2011 with 379 pre-trial detainees and convicted prisoners at 47 detention centers across the country, the UNAMA said. Officials say four Afghans working for a French development organization in northern Afghanistan have been abducted. Faria Province Deputy Governor Abdul Sattar Boris says the team was driving back from a training Monday afternoon when they were ambushed by a man on a motorcycle and says Boris says the captors were Taliban militants. However, the French director for, director for the organization, Actis, says it is still not clear who took the staffers. Zegi Garwal says the three trainers and a driver were all low locals who were coming back from conducting hygiene training at a mosque when they were kidnapped. U.S. is aggravating the HIV-AIDS problem in Russia in the West by refusing to use its forces to destroy opium corps, crops in Afghanistan, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said on Monday. Lavrov made Russia's persistent case for poppy crop er eradication by United States and NATO forces in Afghanistan at a conference on communicable diseases in the in the Eastern Europe and Central Asia region, where AIDS is a growing problem. Afghanistan is the world's biggest producer of poppies used to make opium the key ingredient in the production of heroin, while Russia is the largest per capita consumer of the drug and faces an HIV AIDS epidemic that is spreading from dirty needles. Russia, which fought a decade-long war in Afghanistan in the 1980s, says the United States made a big mistake when it reversed its anti-drug strategy in 2009 by facing out crop dedication efforts to focus in a state on intercepting drugs and hunting production operations and drug laws. National Transitional Council forces say they have cornered loyalists of Muammar Gaddafi in a small area in the center of Sirte, the hometown of the deposed Libyan leader whose whereabouts remain unknown more than six weeks after he was driven out of the capital Tripoli. Abdul Salam Jawallah, commander of NTC units from eastern Libya, on Monday said that Gaddafi's forces are cornered in two neighborhoods near the sea, an area of about two kilometers a square, but there is still resistance. There are fears the fighting could be could breed long-term hostility, making it hard for the NTC to unite the vast North African state once the conflict is over. Umar Abu Lifa, a commander of government forces attacking Syria from the West, said that 80 percent of Syria is now under the control of NTC fighters. Meanwhile, a group of more than 200 gunmen attacked a mosque in Tripoli and ransacked the tombs of two imams, witnesses said on Monday. 
In the Egypt's ruling, Supreme Council of the Armed Forces has called for a speedy investigation into Sunday night's deadly clashes in the Egyptian capital Kairou that left at least 26 dead and more than 300 injured, mostly Coptic Christians. This CAF tasked the government with quickly forming a fact-finding committee to determine what happened and take legal measures against all those proven to have been involved either directly or by incitement, in state television reported at an emergency meeting held on Monday. The the military council also reiterated that it continues to bear national responsibility to protect the people after the January 25th revolution until it hands power to an elected civilian authority. It blamed the clashes on efforts by some to destroy the pillars of the state and sow chaos and said it would take the necessary measures to restore the security situation. And that's all for now. Stay with the news in 30 minutes.